have a great technique today for how you can find extraordinary stories in an ordinary day. This webinar is just going to wake you up to the possibility around you and turn every day into a into creativity, into exploring, into waking up and seeing that you can take these little things that happen to you and transform them into a mind blowing story that can rock an audience. So today you're going to learn how to uncover these stories for speeches, TED Talks, blogs, social media, TV appearances. When you are aware of the kind of stories that are happening around you, you become conscious of it. That turns you into a thought leader and influencer because you become conscious of the effect you have on others. So many people want to be motivational speakers. And I go, well, what kind of influence do you have on other people every day? And it's like, I don't know. What? What? I don't know. Well, you will know. After this webinar, you will know exactly what kind of effect you have on others. Um, I want to also show you what holds you back from your success. Now, this is what I call your mess. And as I've said in other webinars, you cannot spell message without the first four letters. Mess. Your message is based on what exactly is holding you back from success. When you discover that and you discover your mess to success um, story, uh, that's when you truly start transforming not only your life but others. I'm going to show you how to control your experiences rather than let them control you. I do a lot of things in my life because I know they will make great stories. Like, so, I don't know if I should share this. Oh, what the hell. Uh, somebody just asked me if I would do naked photos. Now, look at me, people. I'm not a young person. Um, I, I, I. I don't, I looked at my butt in the mirror and I went, have I been in an auto accident? I don't need a moon filter from my butt. It already has craters, but enough of that. But you know what? I said, yes, <laughs> because I thought what a great story this will be. So very often in our life, we need to say yes to risky adventures and um, because It'll be a great story that can turn into a book about finding adventure in life or a blog. So the idea is to escalate your days. And of course, when you start discovering, you know, these stories that have a message of inspiration in them, you become a passionate leader and a motivational force in the world. And this is going to be a surprise caveat today. I know a lot of people um, go, I don't remember my childhood. Or they'll, they'll paint their childhood with one color. I had a happy childhood. And that's all I want to talk about. I love how people just go, take their childhood, just use the word happy, and be done with it. Well, wait till you see what we're going to do today. This is really going to be exciting. Um, and what else? Find and live the message of you. When you discover your message and you understand who you are and what you are, you can put that on like a coat in the morning. Like when you get depressed, uh, you can just put that message on and, and live life in possibility rather than in depression. Um, you can control it. And so isn't this going to be fun? So this is based on my book, The Message of You. I know many of you read the Comedy Bible. And that's actually going to be translated into Spanish now. It just was translated into Russian. That's right. I'm the one bringing, um, turning Russian, doing the jokes in Russia. I, I, I did a workshop there and then they bought my book. So we are not even going to talk about that because the NSA is probably listening to me right now. But The Message of You is the book that um, all my work right now is based on. And that has led me to be able to make a living speaking. Now, come on, all you women to get paid to speak. How friggin' fantastic is that? So I go out, I get paid to speak and like that. I, I get to travel internationally. This is the Hong Kong Business Awards. 
And then, and then I go after I do a gig, um, you know, I get to go to the Caribbean, like I'll do the gig and then go vacationing or get to go to, you know, Vancouver. This is in uh, Siam Reap. After I did Hong Kong, I got to travel there and I did a show in orphanages. So it's, it's, awesome that I get to live this sort of life and be able to pay. I'm just going for a gig. I just got booked last week. I'm going in two weeks to Iceland. Um, places that I would never think to vacation, but then you work for a day and then you turn it into a vacation. And I now teach how to have my life and my career. I don't think you want my life, but you want my career to get paid to speak at the Message of You University, and the end of this webinar, I'm going to have a special offer for you. So, uh, this is the Message of You University. I, it's like ridiculously inexpensive, because <laughs> I know a lot of creative types don't have a lot of money, so I made it really affordable, and even more affordable. If you stay to the end of this webinar, I will give you um, a special deal. So, where can you use an amazing uh, story. This is where we do a little interaction. Um, just where do you think you would want to use an amazing story? Let me get an idea of where you guys are. Uh, um, where? Where can you use your story? So, you know, you can click as many as you would like. Uh, are you going to use them in a speech, in a TED Talk, a Toastmaster? Some of you might be to our Toastmaster. I spent a special invite to Toastmaster members for this. Um, to help you find your stories, business meaning, you know, when you, when you give an idea, rather than just talking about an idea with uh, a story, uh, it gets your point across. And the story doesn't have to be long. Social media, great places. Um, I actually got some jobs after I started um, blogging about depression. Um, and I will tell you that story by the end because I, I use this method uh, to find it. So as a blog. So let's just see. Uh, uh, let me just share the results here. So it seems like most of you want to use it in a speech, which is really super smart of you because um, when you give a speech, it's your stories that they remember. So let's continue on. Um, with this. So I'd also like now everybody to, um, where do you look for stories? Like, let's just say you, you got a Toastmaster competition, you want to tell uh, a story. How do you find your stories? Um, where do you look for your stories? Um, now, some of you look for, oh, something funny that happened. All right. Some of you look for, well, when someone dies, I have a story. Uh, when you have a message, like you're going to figure out your message, then you'll figure out what story goes with your message. Uh, Life-changing moments, uh, when success hits. Um, uh, Frederick says strong feelings. I see some of you are putting in the chat. Where, where, where do you look for stories? Something deeply personal, all right? Uh, or a life challenge. Um, um, when you dare something greatly, right? So, well, I'm going to tell you right now from my kids, uh, oh, kids, I, I, you know what? I would have kids just for material. <laughs> I, would, I would do that for material and the write-off. Uh, anything personal that has a universal connection all around you just need to find it. And, and yes, kids are great material. Um, um, kids are good material as long as you don't start dating them. Um, now, here's the thing. I, I find that Toastmasters who go, I'm going to find something funny that happened, usually end up with hack stories. That's what I find. Um, because any story can be made funny. So I choose, I always choose not to do funny stories because they're good for a punchline. And then it's like you're laying a lot, what we comics call laying a lot of pipe to get to the end. Uh, when success is life challenge. Okay. So these are all true, but I'm going to show you because I wrote this journal uh, uh, I, um, as a supplement to the message of you. And it's called Finding Extraordinary Stories in Ordinary Day. It's a message of you journal. 
And I wrote this because what I wanted to do was keep a journal, but I kept it like, I don't know about you. When you keep a journal, it's really friggin' boring. It's like, oh, okay, this is what I ate. This is what I did. Or oh, someone said something and it really hurt me and I hate them or I love them. Or it just seemed like this messy hodgepodge of emotion. And I, and I went, there's got to be a way to keep a journal of what happens in a day that actually transforms into great stories. So I set myself up to create a formula to find that. And I, and I did it and it works. I was asked to speak um, um, at, at the Irma Bombeck um, workshop conference. And I was also asked to speak at Toastmasters International um, uh, and twice. And I've, and I've done this, these, this formula and it blows people's minds. So what I'd like you to do now is to open up, aside from you know looking at me, uh, a Word document. I'm gonna take you through this formula and be prepared to um, find something extraordinary right now. Um, what I'd like you to do is also, I'm gonna ask you to write into the chat um, some of the things that you're thinking about and then I'm going to pick somebody to coach today. So that's how today's going to go. So let's go into this formula and see how this goes. So here's step one. There's eight steps, I think. Okay. Now, I want you to think of yesterday. All right. So start thinking about yesterday and think about uh, you got up. I know yesterday seems so long ago. It's hard to even remember, right? So maybe look in your phone, see what you did yesterday. But I want you to break it into scenes, like short sentences of what happened. Oop, got ahead of myself. What were the scenes of today? Now, the scene could be the scene of you having breakfast with your kids. But a scene can't be, I had breakfast with my kids and then I went to work. That's two scenes. So we want to break up the day in terms of a movie. Um, and, and you're going to shoot one scene. So um, why don't you write into the chat just scenes. So they should be short sentences. Now, the best kind of scene is when you are angry about something. Uh, do you, did you have a scene where you went to the dry cleaner and they didn't have your clothes? I'm not looking for big emotion. I'm looking for something that like you walked to your dog and someone yelled at you because you didn't have a leash. So just a couple of the scenes of, of, of today. Okay. Someone came to help you in the morning, um, went to Toastmasters in the evening. Okay, great at Toastmasters, and, and think of something, a moment, like, I like to think of a moment where something, you know, bothered you, because those were, that's gonna be the scene. Okay, went to a chiropractic point and worked out with skinny women, and you're fat. Okay, good, all good. Uh, my husband had an a, 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 a electrician come at 7 a.m. electrician at 7 a.m. Excellent. So we're not trying to be funny here because here's the here's the caveat. If if you try to be funny when you're developing a story, um, you will not succeed in this exercise because it has to be very authentic. So we're not trying to find anything funny. Again, dare to be boring. All right. So I am going to pick um, that I'm walking my dog and uh, a cord gets wrapped about around this guy's legs and he yells at me. Okay, that's it. That's that's my scene. Okay, so get your scene together and uh, we'll continue on. Okay, I, uh, let's see, I'm crazy in the ladies room and airline clubs trying to find a common thread. So that's not a good scene because I don't know where the camera shoot up is. 
Is it in the ladies' room or is it in the airline club? It has to be a specific scene. It's best if there are other people in it. Um, okay. Um, went to dinner with my boyfriend. Really good. Went to a networking event. Went to park my car. Okay. Okay, so you've got a lot of different scenes. Got message about missing receipts for income tax from accountant. Perfect. These are all perfect. You guys are doing a really great job. <clears throat> felt, felt down and didn't want to get out of bed. Pushed myself to get up and exercise. I'm unclear if you exercise in bed. Otherwise, it's two scenes. So again, uh, the scene is in one's one place. So keep, that's a caveat on that. Because um, we're on a bus route on the way back to work. And we're all international. We hate our jobs. It's great. It's good. Got a gift if goes to just open and eat very many small chocolates. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if I could use the stairs because the elevator is broken and hearing my injury was not able to put pressure on weight on my leg. Got it. Okay, Maria, everybody, you're doing so great. So let's move on to step two of this formula. All right, step two of this formula is pick a scene with the most conflict, hardship, or aggravation. So you just want to have some kind of emotion in this scene. So we want to pick something that has the most aggravation or conflict or something in it, okay? So pick a scene and we'll just go with it. All right. Now, next what we're going to do is this is what is so important in a story. And I do say this every time I have a workshop, but nobody listens to me. Uh, many people think telling a story is telling somebody what happens. Like I woke up and I went you know, to the bathroom and then my husband called and then he yelled at me and then this happened, then that happened. Um, that's not a story because you don't have a story unless you have what you wanted. So think of that what you wanted. Um, like, for instance, on my story that I picked, the scene I picked out is I'm going for a walk with my dog. And this guy um, yells at me. So what did I want on that? I was, I was very, I just wanted to get the walk over with my dog. That's what I wanted. I wanted, I was depressed at the time. I was going through a deep depression and I just wanted maybe, you know, to get some exercise and help myself feel better and, you know, and walk my dog. That's all. That's all I wanted. Okay. So this is not complicated. Uh, if you look at what you wanted, you know, my husband got an electrician at 7 a.m. I just wanted to sleep. Um, I just want to be left alone. I just wanted some peace and quiet, okay? So you have this scene happening, whether you're going to a network meeting and you're going like, I want to meet somebody who can get me a job. I want what, so we really need to get in touch with how we felt. And um, when you get in touch with how you felt, how you feel, this makes the story more alive because you're, occupying your story. You're admitting what you want. So what do you want? I wanted what? I wanted what? So let me read. I wanted to shave and shower the interruption. I'm losing water pressure for once. <laughs> yes, good. Um, went to, to show. Did, what did you want? So you're telling the story. I want, doctor did not show. Held up. Did, I went home, discovered, cut it, read, went to hospital. Uh, that's, too, that's not a scene. A scene is I went to the doctor, um, I, I wanted to get it over quickly. So we're, we're slowly building a story. So stick with me on this, stay in one scene, you're not gonna leave that scene, that's the scene we're dealing with. Um, and what did you want, what did you desire? Okay, uh, F chord quickly without having to pause or stumble. I wanted to switch from a D chord to an F, okay. I want her to muffle screams because we live in the golf and golf and I like hear screaming kids. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted my kids to be quiet. Don't get into story here. I'm just asking you your desire, okay? I want my kids to be quiet. I want some quiet. I want some peace. <laughs> I wanted to get something over with quickly, 
you know, all right. All right. So again, it's not being funny. What do you want in this scene? Got an MRI and convinced, uh, okay, they were closing. I, I don't see, I need to hear the word, I wanted blank. So we need to not, again, the tendency is to say what happened rather than emotionally, what did you want? Okay, I want to turn the clock back and give all the forms to him. Okay, I want to impress my client. Perfect, perfect. It's a simple declaration. Uh, this follows, um, you know, when the classic stories is the Wizard of Oz. And what did Dorothy want? The whole time she wanted one thing. I want to go home. Okay. And if you don't have a character who has a desire, then you have no story. You have someone just ha things happening to them. So we have to have what did you want? Okay. So, so we have our scene. We know where we are. And we know what we want. That's what we have so far. I'm going to take you a little further into the story. What was stopping you from getting what you want? Now, if you want quiet, what are the noises stopping the quiet? What, who's screaming? What are they saying? This is how a story works. If you're Dorothy and you're in The Wizard of Oz, what are the obstacles? You got the flying friggin' monkeys. You got like you know, bad co-workers navigating like the scarecrow doesn't have a brain and the tin man doesn't have a heart and someone doesn't have courage. You got the wicked witch. So the story unfolds that Dorothy wants to get home, but she can't because then there's the poppy field and she, you know, and, uh, and she thinks she's going to get to the wizard and the wizard's going to show her, but he's an idiot. And so what, what, what are some of the obstacles? Okay. Heidi, I want to get out of the house on time. Um, okay, good. All right. So I am going to um, start to have some of you. Um, um, let's see. Um, I'm going to promote some of you uh, to camera and turn your mic on. Uh, just give me one second. Okay. Heidi. Um, let me just see who else we have here. Uh, 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 Heidi, you don't have a camera on, I guess. Uh, D E B. Deborah, do you have a camera? Okay, Deborah, I'm going to promote you. Um, okay. Um, okay, so uh, Jane, I'm going to put, put you in here. Jane. All right. So I'm going to just see what we have here. Okay. And, uh, okay. Okay. All right. So, um, Dorothy, you want to go? Okay. I'll promote you as well. All uh, right. Okay. So, uh, here we have, uh, oh, I guess a lot of you don't have cameras on, or let me just see um, uh, if we can do this. All right, so uh, I'm going to ask those of you who I just picked, oh, they're all women. Oh, well, unlike Trump's government, we'll have all women here. Um, so what I'd like you to do is to, um, um, Dorothy, uh, Deborah? Yeah. Can, can you just uh, tell me what is um, what what scene is? What is it you want, and what are your obstacles? Go okay. ahead. So the scene is um, I didn't get enough sleep due to loud neighbors and knee pain. I wanted a decent night's sleep, uh -huh. and my external obstacles were neighbors with hammers. Okay, so the neighbors are hammering away. Okay, yes. really good. <laughs> That's really great. Okay, Jane, uh, what do you have there? Um, I'm in the youngest member of a bridge club. I'm only 64 and all the members are 80 to 96. <laughs> okay. And, um, it's always an interesting game because some of them can't forget what they have. And if some of them can't remember what they have in their hands in of course, I'm, I think they just invited me. Okay. I, we're getting a little bit into the story because okay. all I want, it's a bridge game and I wanted what? I wanted to have a friendly game of cards, but they're Perfect. all- what's stopping you 
because they are also competitive and they are so stuck they're so stuck in their ways they don't make it easy okay so you want to get into specifics oh um they're challenging me they're throwing money on the table they're saying i'm gonna win they're, they're calling me a shitty player they're insulting they're um then some of them have dementia and they, <laughs> they, can't, remember. <laughs> they can't remember yeah uh, yeah what, whatever it is so we want specific obstacles okay heidi uh what do we have for you heidi i guess um uh, you don't have a, a mic or something. All right. All right. Um, okay. All right, everybody. So let's, so you're doing well. Let's move on with this, these steps here. Because next one is you're not getting what you want. And there's some inner obstacles going on. All right. So um, what, what happened um, on my thing was I'm walking my dog, the, a guy uh, who is always seems to be angry at me. We call him angry man in the neighborhood. He's always angry at me because I don't have a leash. I'm not, you know, because my dog's a therapy dog and highly trained. And, um, but I had him on a leash and I had a small dog on a leash, was extended leash. And this leash gets around his leg and he's screaming at me and I just want to walk my dog. I've been having a really hard time with depression. I want to get some fresh air. I want to be outside. And this guy's yelling at me and, and really excessively. He's calling me, you stupid fucking bitch. That's what he says to me. Okay. And my inner obstacles is I'm scared of him and I lack confidence to stand up to him. And rather than go, that's not appropriate way to talk to me. Nobody talks to me that way. My inner obstacle was my own fear. And I just went, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, you, now, nothing happened to him. Okay. But I'm going, I'm sorry. So my inner obstacle to me having a, a nice walk was my own fear of confrontation. So when you want something, you want to have a good card game, you know, you want to have something, what is your fear? Okay, uh, Dorothy, you, you did something weird here and took control of the, of the thing. Uh, uh, Dorothy, did you want to say what, what, what uh, well, anyway, uh, who wants to uh, share, share that this short story? Now, it needs to be less than one one minute okay so uh what you can do is just raise your hand and i will um i will go to you okay give me one second all right let me give you one second okay so we have a couple of people raising their hands all right so uh let's try trevor who's in um the message of you and asr who i'm not sure who that is and we'll uh we'll try uh, Dorothy. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, okay. So ASR, do you have a camera on or I guess I, um, to put on hold, hide. Well, okay. ASR, <laughs> what's your name? Yes. My name is Arjun. Arjun. Okay. Tell me briefly your story. Um, it, it, it was yesterday that happened and my boss was giving me uh, work to do an assignment and uh, uh, what uh, he gave me was some kind of an admin stuff I was not really interested on in admin stuff but I was I wanted to do something challenging so that is when I had a conflict with him and uh, he says he said that uh, sometimes you cannot be too choosy that pissed me off okay <laughs> okay and he said that and then what were your inner what was your inner obstacle in in getting more challenging work what is it? Uh, to me, I wanted to do something interesting. That was to, the wherein I could use my, uh, you know, mind and soul in it. Yeah, so that's what I wanted. Okay. Okay. Good. And and um and what was stopping you from getting that? I I hear your boss is stopping you. That's an obstacle. But what is inside you that's stopping you? Are you scared to ask uh, for what you want? What is stopping you? I was not you? able to. 
I was not able to put my point across so clearly. I think that was something that was stopping me. What was it? Uh, because that I was not able to put my point across as in to communicate to my boss saying that this is not something that I want to do. You know what like, I think, do you know, do you know what I think was stopping you to be quite frank? Your own mm-hmm. anger. Your Fair anger. Enough your anger because like he's given you this shitty stuff to do and mm-hmm. like you know i've been working here i've been doing stuff and it's your own anger but you can't let your anger out so it's your anger that's stopping you uh okay uh keep, well, let's hold on to that because we're going to go to the next step trevor what do you have uh go ahead what do you have so I want you to buy tickets to a Broadway musical for me and my mom while I'm in New York. And it was totally sold out for all the dates that I'll be in New York. Uh-huh. My own inner obstacle, I guess, was um, frustration that I picked dates that I can't get to see the show and can't get tickets. Mm-hmm. Would that okay. qualify? Yeah, that's good. And what was your inner obstacle? Uh, frustration that I picked dates that don't match when the show is available, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And your fear of letting your mother down. That's your inner obstacle. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Hold Got on it. to that. That's really good. Okay. So let's, let's continue on with, with, with where we're going next with this, because you're all doing great. Um, childhood backstory. Okay. This is where, what does this situation remind you of as a child okay what does this situation remind you of as a child now um let me just tell you what happened with me okay what happened with me was that I continued my jog and my uh, rope had gotten tied around the guy. The guy chewed me out um, um, excessively so for what I did, which was unfair. And I started jogging. And at that moment, I collapsed um, from crying. And all I could see was my father at the dinner table and I had knocked over some milk and my father who was an alcoholic um, overreacted as he always did and said for crying out loud you stupid girl you're so stupid oh right it was an accident was an accident right and that's when I learned um that um it was okay for me to be raged at um and i in that moment i just started to to sob and i hadn't remembered that in a really super long time and i did something that i've never done before And this was what comes is the Eureka moment. Because when we connect what happened yesterday that made us angry or upset or that lack of confidence to a childhood scene, that's when transformation happens. So in that moment, rather than like hating myself or not standing up, I understood why I couldn't address that man and tell him he was inappropriate and let him, you know, be abusive with me because I let my father be abusive with me. And in that moment, I did something totally different. I held myself and another voice emerged. And I said to myself that you are doing the best you can. You do not deserve to be yelled at. And and I'm going to take care of you. So in that moment, a healthy adult part of me rose up and held that wounded child 
And I had at that time, and I just sat there crying in this alley. And, and I had been in a three month depression and that's when it lifted. That was the day that it transformed. Um, and it was all, that's when another voice came to me, a healing voice. And at this point in the story, I can turn to the audience and say, because this is the most important part of your talk, every one of you, no matter what has happened to you, no matter what abuse you've gone through in your life, no matter what abuse you're going through now, every one of you has that healing voice inside of you. And we don't have to wait for moments of of such depression to find it. You can find it now. Okay. So that is taking, I'm on a dog walk and a guy yells at me um, to another level. Now we don't have to have had, like I actually had the Eureka moment on that walk, but very often we have the Eureka moment as we discover this story. The eureka moment of a story comes when you take that inner obstacle that you felt and i'm going to go right here and ask you asr i'm sorry um and tell me when in your childhood did you um were you too scared to ask for what you wanted What's the first thing that comes to you? Um, there are quite a, quite a few instances, as a matter of fact. Just first thing that comes to you. How old are you? I'm 29. No, when, you, when this memory happened. At eight? Was it eight years old? Um, maybe around 14, I think. Yeah. What happened? Um, I wanted to go to school on a bicycle, but um, my parents were not too comfortable with that because there's a lot of traffic and they were a bit scared about it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what comes off the top of my head now. Mm -hmm. so I don't think that's I, it. It usually happens younger. It usually is something that sets the emotional course for us where we like, and I have a sense with you that you were forced to do some menial tasks, some menial job, something that you were incredibly angry about. Okay, so does anything come to you when I say you had to do a menial task, some sort of um, some something? When you were a kid, did you have a job you had to do that Not was... Really. What? Not really. I, I wasn't involved in any job per se. Not a job, but a task or something or something that you felt or you had to, do you have, do you have other um, um, sisters or brothers? I have an older brother. You have an older brother. Okay. That's right. Okay. Well, well I want you to just start thinking of this. Think of something in a parallel situation where, you know, like it's not always like not getting what you want. It really happens around between before 14. Um, but it could, I mean, it, it could be the whole thing that you didn't, you know, you wanted to ride a bike and your parents said no. It doesn't, you know, how important was that to you? Uh, to me, it, it mattered a lot because uh, most of my classmates used to come by bike. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I was kind of, uh, I felt kind of involved when, you know, when you come back, uh, come back home or ride to school uh, on the bike with your friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so and that, what did you did, do? You know, and what did you do? You just took it? You just went, did you sneak take riding a bike or you just didn't? Or it doesn't <laughs> I, I actually yeah. did that twice. So. Uh -huh. I, I did uh, take the bike out twice. I, yes. I'm not getting this, is the, this has enough emotional resonance. This is not exactly your story, but let's, let's hold it there. Who has uh, who something that they would like to share? And we can go, we can go from there. Okay. Um, 
Alan, uh, do you want to? And Teresa, um, okay. So, so um, Alan, okay, go ahead. Yeah, the one shower in the shower or one bathroom, one water source. Uh, you, when you said about the inner child, it reminded me of uh, what I actually use in my stand-up comedy that when we were kids, we moved every time the rent was due. And now, so, what's your story? I'm sorry. Where does your story take place? At home, in my apartment where I am now. Uh -huh. And what did you want? And what was stopping you? To be able to take a bloody shower without people interrupting me. <laughs> Yes, my, okay. That's my challenge every morning. And uh, when you said about what was related to a childhood experience, being in an apartment that had work facilities has plagued me ever since we was kids. Uh-huh. It had work facilities? I'm not sure what that means. Working facilities, or a shower, plumbing, you know, more than one bathroom. <laughs> And uh, and where I am now, the inner obstacle that I saw was that I couldn't say anything or complain because it's my fault that we're in this situation. With okay, my, my when you were, how old were you when you you realized you you didn't have a shower in your home? We didn't have. Uh, you only had one shower, maybe, or sometimes no shower, just bathtub. You know, little. Mm -hmm. parts. Just trying to get by. How many? How many brothers and sisters? Four. Okay, and and are you the only guy, or did you have sisters? Uh, two little sisters. And who got priority to use a shower when you were growing up? It was whoever, whenever. Whenever. Yeah. So it was competition to use the shower, right? If we had a shower. If you had a shower, did anybody make fun of you for um, not showering? Oh, no, no. No? Okay. I mean, if you don't have a shower and you can't shower, you just, you know. Take a bath. So you grew up poor? Yes. Okay. So, so you can see how, you know, when we tell a story, a lot of us want to talk about something that happened in our childhood of growing up poor growing up without having things that other people have. But it's always weird when I see a grown person tell a story about their childhood. Because why are they telling me something that happened 30, 40, 50 years ago? Why are they telling me this? So it, it loses its immediacy and it feels narcissistic. But when you talk about a story, which we can make really funny, of you trying to take a, a shower and everything's interrupting you, and the kids are interrupting you to the point when you remember that time when you didn't even have a shower and what it's like to be poor and what it's like to grow up poor, right? What was the worst part about growing up poor? Forget about the shower. What was the worst part about it? What was the humiliation? The insecurity, never knowing what was gonna happen next and having no control because of what adults may or may not do. Right. And did you have a father or a mother? Single family, single, just mother. Just a mother. Mm -hmm. And, and, and how powerless did you feel? When was the most powerless you felt? Did you get evicted? Yes. Tell me about the eviction. How old were you? Mm, probably. Nine, ten. Ten. Who's knocking at the door? Well, it wasn't like a formal eviction. It's like the next thing you knew, we were living somewhere else, <laughs> staying with somebody in a room somewhere. It's only now that I look back that I realized what was happening. Right. And how did that? How did that make you feel? Really pissed off at adults. Yeah. Right. So. So. Um, so when you are in that scene, here's what we need to do. What is the scene that you are pissed off at your mother? Where are you standing? Who's in the room? Because when we tell a story, the tendency is to sum it up. It's like uh, we were evicted, always with different people, never knew where we were. Um, that's, 
that makes you distant from your own story. And that makes me as an audience member distant from your story. So how can we find that moment? What is the moment where, I mean, you're standing, just first thing that comes to your mind, what is the image there? Of uh, staying with these, this old lady. I had no, me and my brother staying together. And the, mm -hmm. other, the other sibs were somewhere else. Okay. Because we could, it was not, wasn't enough room for all of us. So they got a two were here, three there. Ah, and, and, and you're staying in your room. And I want now you to just go, what is in your head? And I want you to start this with, oh my God, where's my brother? Well, oh my God, just just talk to me. Like, just start. Oh my God, go ahead. Oh my God. Oh my God, when will this end? Mm hmm. Keep going. Why is this always happening? Okay. I want even more. Like, what? Your brother isn't there. I want you to worry about him. Go ahead. Where is he? Go ahead. Where is he? What? What's? Where are we going tomorrow? How am I going to school tomorrow? Where, who are these people? Yeah. Where's my mother? Where? This is so stupid. Okay. This is so stupid. This is so scary. Okay. Now, now what we do, hold on with me with this. What we do in this story is once we tell, we find that memory that where what and 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 people it when you tell your story and you're working on this and you're angry at something whether it's a card game or you can't get some peace in the shower or you know or you're dealing with your boss not giving you you know the right job the when you write this the first scene that comes to you that image that scene in your childhood is exact right one and this is when we have our life lesson. We have a better understanding of ourselves. So when we, when, 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 and then the action that we take. So let me ask you something. Um, Alan, when you now are at the shower after remembering, like not having a shower, not having, how does that change? What lesson do you learn? What lesson do you learn from that? Well, I don't think of a lesson. Uh, but if you don't have a shower and you're angry because people are noisy or whatever, not leaving you in peace, I mean, what, what, what is the lesson that you learn there? What do you learn there? That I need to do whatever is necessary to do something as simple as having more than one bathroom. Well, also to appreciate what you do have now, isn't it? Yeah, there's that. But at the time of the frustration and the obstacles that are happening, the first thing that comes to my mind is that it's my fault, just like it was with my parents. Ah. Uh. Oh, oh, I see. So I can't even complain because who am I going to shout at? It's my fault. But I, I think when you go back and you tell that childhood story, you know how I tell the story that I told about my father's yelling at me and, I'm, and it's my fault because I don't yell back? Mm -hmm. What has to happen in that story is that voice of understanding that goes, you're a kid and you're not responsible. You're not responsible. And when you come back, it's like, and you remember how little you have, the message can be to realize that the smallest things that you have now are so valuable and so important and the sense of gratitude that you have for your life and the sense of gratitude that you were able to provide for your family here. And then that's when you turn to the audience and go, what do you, what do you have in your life 
that you can be grateful for. That's superb because the reason that there's a challenge in the shower is because my wife wants to get in the bathroom. And what you just said, light bulb, I have a wife. And many people don't. Your mother didn't have a partner. No. You have so much that you didn't have. Yes. And we can kind of look at the irritations of life and the frustrations of life. But what about looking to, you know, what, you know, and it can, and very often it can feel it's never enough. But to have the relationship you have with your wife and with your kids and to have this family, maybe it's okay to have noise in the shower. Yeah. Like at that moment, you realize this in the story because this is the most important part. When you tell a story, we are recreating this moment of understanding the gratitude that we have for what we have because you remember what it was like not to have. Exactly. So... Right. It's huge because, uh, yeah, I, I think about I have an excellent wife. <laughs> so her her mess with me in the shower is trivial. <laughs> <laughs> and right, and her taking one with you is even better. So, so Alan, this message, your message of gratitude to share with the world, mm -hmm. does that resonate with your life? Yes. Does that resonate with you? Do you yes. feel this is a message? that can help other people and be a wake up call in the world. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing and revealing of yourself. And, and um, you know, I just want to tell you people that um, obviously this is how we build a story. We build a story from starting from something incredibly authentic. We ask, we ask, we write the story, we find out what do we want in the story, and then what's stopping us from having it. And then we go, what is in ourselves that's stopping us from having what we want in that scene? Whether it's to go back to sleep, or whether it's to like voice your opinion, or whether it's to have what you want. What's stopping you from that? And then ask yourself right away, what does this remind you of in your childhood? What is this? What, what clicks, what clicks for you? What scene? Just the first thing that comes to your mind, go with that. And when you go to that scene, you will have a eureka moment that you will understand that when you're angry at the dry cleaner, it goes back to that day that your mom said you're going to Disneyland and then she changed your mind. And then you can't stand when someone says your dry cleaning is going to be ready on Tuesday and they lied to you. Every time you're angry in your life it goes back to this childhood memory when you can have consciousness over this you will then wake up to every day and there will never be an ordinary day because every single ordinary day will reveal to you an extraordinary story and in that story is a message to you because the mess in your childhood is what forms your message. Walt Disney talks about his alcoholic parents, his horrible childhood, which was why he created Disneyland, the happiest place on earth. Steve Jobs talks about his disconnection with his family and he was adopted and he was disconnected. And that is why he created gadgets that connect us all and the theme of Apple. So your message is not formed by extraordinary things that happen to you or all your success. It is your journey from actually a childhood mess to having consciousness and understanding of what you need to learn. Because here's the truth about being a speaker. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here it is. We all speak on what we need to learn. All speakers speak on what they need to hear. So your process of discovering with your message is not only going to transform other people's lives, it will transform your own. 
And so in going back to this, obviously this process is not something you can do alone. And step eight is the action you're going to take. What action are you going to take? Maybe Alan's action is going to be, he's going to now find three things to appreciate about his wife every day and tell her. And those actions become part of your motivational speech. Those are the action steps that you give to the audience. Here are three things to have more appreciation. But they are all built on a foundation of absolute truth that happens in an ordinary day that connects to your childhood. And then, of course, we can always spread our message um, on Twitter or Facebook and take our stories and make sure they have a message.